Hi, this is the last video of Chapter 5, General Equilibrium and Economic Efficiency. In this video, we are going to talk about competitive equilibrium in a production economy. So just to begin, if input markets are competitive, a point of, of efficient production is going to be achieved. And this is something that we are going to show now. So if the labor and capital markets are perfectly competitive, then we know that the wage will be the same in all industry. So the salary is going to be the same in all industries. Likewise, the rental price of capital, which is R, and we have here the price of capital, which is R, will be the same whether capital is used in the food or the clothing industry. These are the two industries that we have in our sample. So we know from uh, the past chapters that if producers of food and clothing are going to minimize production cost, they will use combinations of labor and capital so that the ratio of the marginal products of the two inputs is equal to the ratio of the input prices. This means that the marginal product of labor divided by the marginal product of capital is going to be equal to the um, to the relative price of labor and capital, which are wage divided by uh, the R, which is the rental price of capital. But we also showed this was in the in the first part of microeconomics. So in the last in the, in the previous previous course of microeconomics. We also show that the ratio of the marginal products of the two inputs is equal to the marginal rate of technical substitution of labor for capital. So this is the marginal rate of technical substitution of labor for capital. And this equals to W divided by R. Then since the marginal rate of technical substitution of labor for capital is the slope of the firm is a quant for a competitive equilibrium to occur in the input market, we need to have that each producer must use labor and capital so that the slopes of the isoquants are equal to one another and to the ratio of the prices of the two inputs. So as a result, the competitive equilibrium lies on the production contract curve, and the competitive equilibrium is going to be efficient in production. So then we will have technical efficiency, which is the condition under which firms combine inputs to produce a given output as inexpensively as possible, so as cheap as possible. So, as I have said before, the competitive equilibrium is going to line the production contract curve, and the competitive equilibrium will be efficient in production. Now, if we would repeat the Edgeworth box with respect to two factors instead of two goods, and with respect to two firms instead of two consumers, we will find a contract production curve or the production contract curve, it's also called. And at the end, if we extend this to the production possibilities frontier, we will find that this production possibilities frontiers will show the various combinations of food and clothing that can be produced with fixed inputs of labor and capital. So this figure that we have here is this production possibilities frontier. And this frontier comes from the production contract curve. So each point in this curve will come from this contract curve, from this production contract curve. And the production possibilities frontiers is going to describe an efficiently produced level of both food and clothing. So 
And at this point, when we have OF, this point represents one extreme in which only clothing is produced. And OC is just the other extreme where only food is produced and not clothing. We won't produce any quantity of clothing. And then the points B, C and D are other points that come from the contract card. Then we also have another interesting characteristic of the production possibilities frontier, and that's it, that uh, the, the frontier is concave. But why is concave? Because it, it's a slope increases as the level of production of food increases. So when we have more food and less clothing, then the slope is increasing, and we can find it here. Between B and C, we see that when we want to go from B to C, we have to decrease one unit of clothing and increase one unit of food. Just to go from B to C. But if we want to move in D, we see that when we want to increase one unit of food, we have to decrease in two units of clothing, which means that the slope is increasing. The slope is becoming more and more vertical. And then, at the end, what is the slope of this frontier? The slope of this frontier is the marginal rate of transformation. So then, the marginal rate of transformation is defined as the amount of one good that must be given up to produce one additional unit of a second good. So in our case, how many clothes do we have to give up to produce one more unit of food, which is the other good? At every point along the frontier, the following condition must be home, which is that the marginal rate of transformation equals to the marginal cost of food divided by the marginal cost of clothing. Well then, an economy produces output efficiently only if, for each consumer, the marginal rate of substitution equals to the marginal rate of transformation. So we have, on the one hand, the market of products or of goods, and the, on the other hand, the market of inputs, as we can see. So the output efficiency means that the efficient combination of output is produced when the marginal rate of transformation between the two goods, which measures the cost of producing one good relative to the other, is equal to the marginal consumer rate of substitution, which measures the marginal benefit of consuming one good relative to the other. And what does it mean? It means that we find this point the production possibilities frontier is tangent to the indifference curve. So here we have the slope of both, which means that the marginal rate of substitution equal to the marginal rate of transformation. Then, when output markets are perfectly competitive, all consumers are going to allocate their budget so that the marginal rates of substitution between two goods are equal to the price ratio. This is what we have seen in the first part. So for our two goods, food and clothing, we will find that the marginal rate of substitution equals to these relative prices. And at the same time, each profit maximizing firm is going to produce its output up to the point at which the price equals to the marginal cost. And again, it happens the same for, the, for both goods, for food and for clothing. So the price of food equals to the marginal cost of food and the price of clothing equals to the marginal cost of clothing. Because the marginal rate of transformation is equal to the ratio of the marginal cost of production, then we find that the marginal rate of transformation equal to this ratio of the marginal cost 
and this equals to the ratio of the prices, and then it, this is going to be equal to the marginal rate of transformation, the of substitution. So at the end, we find that the marginal rate of transformation is equal to the marginal rate of substitution, as we have said in the previous slide. And this will be the equilibrium in all the markets, inputs and growths. And that's the end of this chapter. See you in the next video.